This is a podcast called Literature about classic literature. It's raining outside, so that that ties in with the mm. with the nothing, with the depression. I mm. don't know, <laughs> with the lockdown, <laughs> the weather stay, telling us to stay inside. It's begging oh, us. Buddy. It's begging us to stay inside. So today we're doing um, a shorty, a little short, a play, a little actually. shorty, a little shorty, because um, we were going to be doing a longer <laughs> book. Yeah, a longer book today, but um, because I've been working so much, I haven't been able to finish it. A uh, little miss working too much. You know how many phone calls I get from people that have no work at all much? <laughs> <laughs> I feel very sorry for them. Um, tell them they should read more. Uh, <laughs> maybe don't they probably wouldn't appreciate that they really would not <laughs> i had this one guy but, i was just like hey uh so i see here you have two credit cards and he's like wrong i only have one credit card are you sure you work for <laughs> because you are wrong <laughs> and then he hung up <laughs> Ooh, okay well, that's and i was like convenient all right that's my call for the hour done <laughs> See, um, normally I am able to listen to audiobooks while I'm at work, but when I have to mm -hmm. um, homeschool seven-year-old twin boys who really want to tell me about their secret layers that are very heavy on the security measures, um, it comprised almost entirely of security measures, um, it's really hard to focus on Moby Dick, so this week I... Moby Dick? Well, Moby Dick was where I saw the most trouble. <laughs> Well, isn't that what happens to you at home as well? Just boys telling you about lairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just looking after boys yeah. all the time. Won't but, stop um, talking about Minecraft. Yeah, so what's this shouty play you got lined up? We got Oedipus Rex by Sophocles. <gasps> the OG motherfucker. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, genuinely. Mm. Yeah literally yeah literally well you know the ending already so that's spoiled but that's okay because i know he fucks his mom something creepy with an eyeball mm -hmm. and i think like freud is somehow there <laughs> he's just in the background like oh <laughs> just jerking off <laughs> just jerking it in the bushes <laughs> he's like this shall make for a great psychology <laughs> that's like freud impression oh my God. <laughs> yeah it's really accurate See? i mean <laughs> All boys want to fuck um, their mother. And since well, now I'm just a dra I'm a vampire. Well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he was too. Maybe that was the secret. Yeah, so feel free to, because um, this is a shorty, feel free to stop me, ask me any questions you have about ancient Greece or ancient Greek theater, because I did actually read up and refresh my knowledge. Ain't that what I do anyway? From uni, yeah. So we can go on long tangents today. Ain't that what we do anyway? Yeah, but now, now it's allowed. It's not it, what was before no. not anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to keep it the same format, but uh, ain't happening <laughs> that way, Jose. I got nothing. This play is believed to have been first performed around 429 BC. Um, oh, nine years too late. Or 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, because it's 2020 now? It took me a little while to parse what you were saying. Um... What can I say? I'm not hip to the jazz cabbage. Oh my god! As it. <laughs> oh my god! Don't, don't do that. Don't lie to our audience of <laughs> I don't know two. Throw you on a good day. So this is written by Sophocles. He's the second, um, chronologically the second kind of famous ancient Greek playwright that we have extant copies of his work. Um, the one before him was called... Fuck his dad. Aeschylus, I think his name is. <laughs> um, it's hard to pronounce. It's, it's spelled really weird. Um, I actually looked up the pronunciation before, but I forgot it, so there's that. And then after him is um, Euripides? Why are you doing? You're the oh, one that was like, I looked it up. I you did look it up, but now I forgot any it. questions? <laughs> I did only homework. Um, wah, wah, wah. Famous playwright won some awards. Um, oh, good for him. Yeah, won <laughs> ancient Greek awards. Apparently, they gave him a goat. I don't know. <laughs> 
Apparently that's what it was. Oh my god, wait. Speaking of goats. Yeah. So at around 2.30, we were all just waiting for Dan Drews to do his thing. <laughs> and so we were all on ABC News. His thing and is giving like a live press conference. Updates. And then um, someone had asked in the comments, like, would I get fined if I um, help my neighbor find her goat? I live in St. Kilda and my neighbor can't leave her house. So sometimes I help her find her goat. <laughs> and it's just like... That's such a specific problem. To I have. guess I that's why you gotta ask. I guess because it's not gonna be in the handbook, right? You gotta ask the, you gotta get it from the source. So it's set in some time before the Odyssey. So it's based on a, a on an ancient Greek myth, fairly famous ancient Greek myth, um, of Oedipus, the king. That's why it's called Oedipus Rex. Oedipus Rex in Latin means Oedipus the king. So its name got changed at some point. I think originally it was just Oedipus. Regardless. Um, it's an old, 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 old story that that his <laughs> audience would have known already. Taylor's so. oldest time, fucking my mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's I. It's genuinely like I feel like whoever wrote it or came up with it originally was like, and he has to escape his fate, and his fate is the worst thing that could ever happen to someone. Accidentally fucking your mom. <laughs> Yeah, like that, um, we don't have to include this in the podcast, but do you remember that um, question I kept asking people? Like, if your boyfriend and your dad did, like, a Freaky Friday switch, <laughs> and the only way to get them back to normal is to either fuck your boyfriend, but with your dad's brain in them, or fuck your dad, but your boyfriend's Actually, brain in Actually, keep them. this part in it, it's funny. <laughs> and then Matt, Matt McCartney said, I fuck both of them, just in case it doesn't work the first time. <laughs> And oh, that's, no. the, that's the answer I've received. This, this is set some time before the Odyssey. So, um, Sean Bean wasn't around yet. He wasn't going like, no. hey, who, y'all want to see that play about um, fucking your mom? <laughs> Brad yeah. Pitt's like, ew, man, no. What time? <laughs> We're in the city of Thebes, which I think you'll remember from the classic Disney animated Hercules I movie. do. Yeah. It's the most, probably the most famous depiction of the ancient city of Thebes. Um, he's the king of that city. This guy called Oedipus. Ugh. He's the king of Thebes. Oedipus, the king of Thebes, steps out of the royal palace of Thebes, yawning, stretching, I assume, with bare naked ladies playing in the background. <laughs> like, what a good day to fuck my mom. <laughs> That's my um. It's He's for a fueler. Of- I think we saw very different movies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's gre- <laughs> he's greeted by a procession of priests. Oh, okay. Um, to Apollo, I believe, who are in turn surrounded by the citizens of Thebes, and they're not doing too hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Apollo or the priests? The citizens are not doing too hot. You know what? It it seems to me that they never really are. <laughs> What do citizens thrive? The I citizens. ask you now, in Not a stage right four lockdown with a curfew <laughs> upon us. What would make when, citizens thrive? When is it our time <laughs> to like yawn with bare naked ladies playing in the background? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, true. So they're impoverished um, and sick. They're carrying branches wrapped in wool, which they're going to offer to the gods as gifts. I guess it's coming into winter. The gods are going to want some wool to knit some nice shawls or something. The god, the gods are um, Jeffrey Tambor and Arrested Development. Going, I don't want these. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and I, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they had to put the wool on sticks. I don't know what's going on there. Thebes has been struck by a plague, much like here. The citizens are dying. No one knows how to put an end to it. Um, Good one. I wrote. Everyone is wearing masks too, but it's Greek tragedy masks. So. They would often wear yeah. masks. You know those, you know, whenever someone's like, oh, theater. And it's like a community theater. And they'll put like the happy mask and the sad mask. And it'll be like, come to a night of theater, 7 p.m. The no. the back building in the school. The, those are the masks that they're drawing from. It's Greek tragedy masks. Alana's laughing. She's really relating to this really hard right now. Sorry, I wasn't a theater kid. No, it's okay. All right. Can't relate to you, fucking bozo. If you look up drama on clip art, you will get. Do you yeah, the clip smiley art? one and the sad one. Exactly. So that's where we're coming from. This ancient 
ancient practice of wearing masks. Oedipus the king asks the priest why the citizens have gathered around the palace. The priest reminds Oedipus that they're in the middle of the plague. <laughs> He's like, remember that? And he just is like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, that. No. <laughs> and then the priest asks Oedipus if he's got any neat plans, you know, in the works to save I thought thieves. you said meat plans. No, I'm like, neat. what is a meat plan? <laughs> you got any stage four lockdowns in place, Eddie? <laughs> got any? Guy? Yeah. Oedipus is like, yeah, I see them. What a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> what but, a you know. downer, dude. <laughs> My dick was hard before this convo. I like to imagine when he was like yawning and stretching, he was like naked, <laughs> and the priest just came up to him and they were like and erect, yeah, <laughs> just like utterly hard. It's just like ah, great day to be a king. Yeah. <laughs> the citizens are like, we have locusts and oh, we're dang. so poor and sad, and he's like ah, ah, hard to keep, hard to keep erect in these situations. <laughs> <laughs> so Oedipus has sent Creon. Um, who they pronounce in the in the fifties like staging I watched they pronounced it crayon which I love <laughs> crayon um, crayon the skin colored the flesh colored crayon oh what skin huh <laughs> your skin mine mm. <laughs> they have a whole your alabaster skin <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the white your crayon? blonde haired <laughs> blue eyed Aryan skin <laughs> that flesh color. I'm getting real here. You are. You should... I'm so I'm so topical. We should put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Which part? The whole bit? The it's whole a lot. Thing. It's, it just gets, the text gets smaller as we go down the paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> Merch idea. <laughs> um, so Crayon his, is his brother-in-law. So his wife's brother. And kind of like a sub-ruler. Like a grand vizier type of, I think. Um, sure. He's just sent this guy, the king Oedipus has just sent this guy, Crayon, to the oracle at Delphi. There's um, an oracle? Delphi. There is an oracle. She has her own city. Um, I went there. It's really cool. <laughs> it's, um, How the... did you go to 429? My time machine. No, but the okay. ruins, the ruins have like this um, break in the floor of the temple. And one of the theories is that some weird like... <laughs> Not carbon monoxide, but some weird, like, hallucinogenic gas was escaping from the earth. And that's Ooh. why the priestesses in this particular temple would, like, see vision. <laughs> Sounds like carbon monoxide to me. Yeah. So that's the Oracle of Delphi. So the, this city was They're entirely tripping. They're tripping devoted. Balls in Delphi. Yeah. In Delphi, she's tripping balls. I don't know if it has a ruler per se, but all of the rulers of the different city-states around Greece will make pilgrimages to Delphi. Um, or Delphi, depending on who you talk to, um, to to ask her questions, to ask her questions about the future, to ask her for advice. She's just sitting there, hi, having the time of her life, dishing out advice. That's literally me yeah. w- in this podcast, like, better yeah. days <laughs> before this. True. Before this. Um, so he's just sent Crayon there, Crayon's um, on his way back, or oh, he's just got back. Um, and so Oedipus asks Crayon what the Oracle has said. Crayon asks Oedipus if he wants to hear the news in private in his big old castle. Um, but Oedipus insists that all the citizens hear. He's a man of the people, you know. He's naked. He's, He's like, whatever you have to tell me, you can tell to my citizens. <laughs> He's getting a little hard again. <laughs> <laughs> I love this version of Oedipus. <laughs> um, Crayon then tells him what he has learned from the god Apollo, who obviously spoke through the oracle. I think Apollo was the main one, the oracle talk to um at delphi all right all right so remember he's the god of the sun of music of positive stuff he's a dude he's he's hot he's cool he rapes lots yeah. of women he's, he's neurotypical fun shit. dude yeah he's yeah. yeah whatever he's a fuck boy yeah. um crayon the wait did tells... you say rapes women hello <laughs> yeah lots of them um yeah all the gods did crayon tells oedipus what he's learned from the god apollo who spoke through the oracle the murderer of Laius, who was the king of Thebes before Oedipus was, is currently in Thebes. And so the murderer of this previous king must be driven out of Thebes in order for the plague to end. 
sir. Who it's murdered exciting. the old king? Was it old maid Eds? Because like, mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. why would he be king if he didn't kill anyone? Well, he well like it, it's explained, and I'll explain that to you why he's king. But, oh, here we um, go. It was like a prequel that you know all all myths have prequels. Crayon goes on to tell the story of Lias's murder. On their way to consult an oracle about something else. Consulting oracles is like 90% of a king's job in ancient Greece. The other percentage is standing at the front of your yeah. palace naked. <laughs> Just... <laughs> yeah. So Laius, the previous king, and all but one of his fellow travelers were killed by thieves. Well... well. Mm. Oedipus asks why the Thebans made no attempt to find the murderers, and Crayon reminds him that Thebes was a bit preoccupied at that point in time with a huge sphinx that was cursing them. There was a sphinx. Oh. Cursing them. <laughs> was a... Um, I know what you did. Bit of background, Oedipus arrived at Thebes as like a nobody, or like king of a different place, Corinth, but like no one knew who he was. He found the city under the sway of a sphinx. Who, I want to um, talk more about the sphinx. Is this like a huge sand cat? What's happening here? Yeah, with like a human face. Yeah. Yeah, but that's um, not real, right? <laughs> no, this didn't really happen. It's a myth. No one really fucked their mom? Hopefully. I mean, I don't want to make any claims I can't back up, but I hope nobody did. Oh, I always thought this was like based on Although apparently story. Adam and Eve only had two male children, so. Who? Evil can evil can't have Ad- male Ad- children. <laughs> <laughs> said apparently Adam and Eve only had two male children. Someone fucked their mom. So there was a sphinx. She wouldn't free the city unless her riddle was answered. Sphinxes have riddles. Yeah, they have riddles. What was the riddle? Was it super easy? Was oh, it like Nathan for you up. at the top of the mountain? <laughs> With the rebate box. <laughs> Here we go. Riddle of the Sphinx. Aha. Ooh. Yes, it is one we've all heard. All right. What is before. it? This is the most Lay famous. it on me. What has... What goes on four feet in the morning, two feet at noon, and three feet in the evening? Have you heard it before? Alana has a really smug look on her face, and she knows the answer. That is, you know what? I would have bullied her so hard in school. I would have pulled her hair and been like, you fucking bitch! I would have spat in her like yogurt. Look at that stupid. I would have thrown a pear at her back. A <laughs> Like a really ripe pear. Yeah, and just explode in her back like a grenade. And she's like, oh! <laughs> at my school, um, two minute noodles were banned because one girl threw the boiling noodles in another girl's face. That was me. No, oh, it no. wasn't. If you were <laughs> the same school as me, I would have killed myself probably. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, now. Okay. So four legs in Any the guesses? morning. Th- th- four legs in the morning. Th- two at noon. Three at night. What? Um, two. Yeah. Two at noon. Three at in the evening. Oh, uh, is this to do with time or something? Yeah, a little bit. Or or with like an autumn. Oh, wait. <laughs> hang on. Four. I love the idea that like what you're reacting now is what Oedipus reacted initially. <laughs> He's trying to solve the riddle. He's just like, all right, so fuck uh, in the morning. Uh, okay, so in the morning, I'm hard. I'm, I'm rock hard. <laughs> at, at noon, I'm getting a little soft. Evening, I can get hard, but it's not as easy. So, um. <laughs> it's dicks. Um, um, close. The answer is a man. A man is a baby in the morning um, of his life. So he crawls on four. No, eight just get feet. up on your feet, bro. Well, a man is an adult in the noon, walks on two feet. When a man is old in the evening of his life, he walks on a cane with three feet. Oh, I was like, does he lose the limb? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, ah, I'm over the age of 40. That's senior citizenry in like 420. And they're like, give up the leg, old man. <laughs> is this midsummer? Yes. Ah, so okay, that was that's a really the, stupid riddle. That was riddle. the Sphinx. Yeah. Oh, fuck you, Sphinx. sphinx. Well, maybe it was more obvious back then. <laughs> maybe. Came Did people more... crawl out of bed back then? <laughs> and they're like, ah, time for the first part of the riddle. Oh, fuck <laughs> this. <laughs> and no one in that stupid town could get it. I guess not. Maybe that's why, because it was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> they find out the answer. Like, 
he was like, the Sphinx is like, what is the answer? And he was like, oh, man. And she was like, oh, correct. <laughs> uh, what is this version of it? <laughs> just like, yeah. Oh, shucks. And just like stumbling into <laughs> Did, any... Did his someone way say Sphinx riddle? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, so Laius, previous king, killed by thieves. Um they didn't bother looking for the murderer because there's a sphinx situation oedipus comes into the city solves the riddle king's dead so they're like you should be the king <laughs> he's like hey guy <laughs> you we, we, hey you your dick's hard <laughs> you want to be king <laughs> they're like he's really smart i guess he solved the riddle that no one else could solve he marries the queen um the widowed queen uh, rags to riches that's great for him. Good for him. Or is it? Uh, he does fuck his mom. <laughs> Hearing now, it's so it's so complicated. Hearing now about the previous king's murder, Oedipus resolves to solve the mystery. Because it's the noble thing to do. And also because it doesn't do to have a king slayer around when you're a king, who he might slay. So that's kind of like his reasoning there. Maybe he just wants to be a detective. Maybe he didn't want to be a king in the first place. <laughs> He didn't even mean to solve the riddle. He was just like, oh, man. <laughs> and the Sphinx was like, curses. Okay, now the chorus enters. Oh, here we go. Calling on the gods, Apollo, Athena, and Artemis to save Thebes. So a chorus was anywhere from 15 to 50 people. It's um, too many. Who, yes, but they kind of um, spoke as both narration and commentary. And, and almost like prophetically knew the themes of what was going on. They knew the future, the past. They're kind of like just this. The, the this... podcast. Um, I was going to say they're like, um, what's his name? Ron Howard? Oh my God. They're the... <laughs> <laughs> In Arrested Development? <laughs> oh my God. It's like. Ed... Ed Ed was was like, like, it's fine. Man. Of course, like, it's not fine. <laughs> <laughs> Being a king rules. <laughs> It did not. <laughs> <laughs> I would never fuck my mom. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Buster is you know, eating. They offer commentation. It's really pretty. Often often they sing, um, and dance. Um, yeah, I've seen Hercules. Yeah, you get it. Okay. Apparently the chorus has not yet heard Creon's news about Lias's murder. Um, it bemoans the state of Thebes um, and finally invokes Dionysus, whose mother was a Theban, actually. So Dionysus is a demigod and his mother was a Theban human. So that's cool. Um, also, theater, ancient Greek theater started as festivals in honor of Dionysus. It started with what you would call a dithyram, which I believe was a big old dance. Um, dance, song, hallucination, maybe sesh. Um, it was a sesh. They were just... And that eventually... Dude. Yeah, pretty much. And that eventually evolved into theater with um, this man called Thespis, where we get the term <gasps> thespian from, um, who apparently was the first person to ever play another character oh. in the telling of a story, apparently. I see. <laughs> so and yeah and so the word tragedy as well um comes from what they think is the greek the ancient greek for goat song um <laughs> that makes so much more sense especially with the um do you remember whenever that big meme was um the i knew you were troubled by taylor swift and it, it was interspersed with the goat just screaming <laughs> <laughs> that's it that that's where the word tragedy context. comes from um, they think it was because the chorus was originally um, portrayed as satyrs, so half goat, half half men oh. kind of thing. Um, and they would sing and dance. They were like Dionysus's groupies. So that was like the thing people would, that was the outfit people would put on for these kind of festivals. If that makes sense. That. Um, and then the satyr play, which is where we get the term satire. Um, was like a raunchy comedy thing that they did when they weren't doing serious tragedies. So that's that's a little bit of background about tragedies in general. Back to Oedipus, he of the he of the erect penis. Not right now, probably. He's busy. Yeah. <laughs> He's solving a mystery. He's solving It'd be a bit of a distraction, crime. I guess. He returns and tells the chorus. So uh, in a lot of stagings, I think the chorus is kind of 
also the townspeople, you know. He tells the chorus that he will end the plague himself by solving the mystery. More riddles. Um, so he puts out a call for tips. Um, like call 1-800-LIAS-MURDER-TIPS, I guess. <laughs> Um, he promises that anyone who acts as an informant um, will be rewarded and that the murderer will receive no harsher punishment than just exile. So he's sure. really trying to encourage people to come forward. Like, we just want to get rid of this plague. No All hard feelings. Right. Water under the bridge. Uh, no one responds, however, and Oedipus furiously curses Laius' murderer and anyone who's protecting him. In his anger, Oedipus proclaims that should he discover the murderer to even be a member of his own family, that person should be struck by the same exile and harsh treatment that he has just wished on the murderer, you know? So, Jesus. no special treatment. We've got to solve this. We've got to just come forward and we'll fix this plague. <laughs> it's Dan Drew's doing this in the premiere. He's just like, all right, people, please. <laughs> oh, no. So Oedipus castigates the citizens of Thebes for letting the murderer go unknown so long. The lazy Thebans. There was a sphinx problem. You know, you were there. The leader of the chorus, there's a leader, suggests that Oedipus call for Tiresias, the blind Theban prophet, famous for, among other things, appearing in the Odyssey um, as a ghost when he goes to Hades and he's like, remember he had oh, yeah, the blind Oh yeah, the blinds. Yeah, that's him. He's here. One of. Oh my One god, like a little cameo. A little recurring character. Yeah. Um, so he's he's here in Thebes. Um, he's is he also, a ghost or is he alive right now? He's alive right now. Oh, so good for Because it's before the Odyssey, remember. Um, so he's famous for that. Um, he's also famous for being transformed into a woman for seven years. Um, what? Oedipus responds that he is already actually called for Tiresias, so he, he's coming. Um, and Tiresias is led in by a boy. Wait, are you just going to go yeah, past no, I'm that not he gonna, was a woman yeah. for seven years? Yeah, I'm just going to go right past that. Um, yeah, okay. Sounds Greek. All right, let's go. <laughs> um, Oedipus begs, what's his face, Tiresias, to reveal who Laius' murderer is. But Tiresias is a sassy man and answers only that he knows the truth, but wishes he did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Confused uh, at first. Okay, Tom Cruise, an interview <laughs> with the vampire. Right. Oh, no, actually, knows the truth, but wishes he didn't. That's um, Antonio Banderas' character. Yeah, yeah. Armand. Armand. With his long hair. <laughs> this could be on um, Antonio Banderas with long hair. Let me do that. Done. Confused at first, then pissed, Oedipus insists that Tiresias tell everybody what he knows. Unfortunately, Tiresias is provoked by Oedipus, his insults and his anger and he begins sassing the king oh good uh only hinting at his knowledge um finally when oedipus is like well maybe it was you tiresias tells oedipus that actually it's you sorry i just <gasps> knocked my microphone yeah you actually, knocked the mic <laughs> it's you <laughs> you're just you're just so caught up in i'm caught up in it. the drama oedipus dares tiresias to say it again it was you. Yeah. <laughs> and so Tiresias out and out calls Oedipus the murderer. The king criticizes Tiresias' powers wildly and insults his blindness. Um, one of the several reasons Oedipus is problematic. But Tiresias <laughs> only responds that the insults will eventually be turned on Oedipus by all of Thebes. What could he possibly mean? It's gonna fuck his mom. Gonna? Oretta? Oretta. <laughs> Driven Where is into this mom? a... Where we got to meet her? Who is she? Or is she just She's coming, for... she's coming, she's coming. She's just a hole. <laughs> <laughs> she's three holes. Um, driven into a fury by the accusation, Oedipus proceeds to speculate that Crayon and Tiresias are conspiring to overthrow him. Oedipus is now scared that everyone doesn't like his hard dick and they're going to not make him king anymore. <laughs> Yeah, cause, cause they're like, maybe you're the murderer, and he's like, oh, what's wrong with you? Why would you, why would you say that? To uh, me? because Antonio Banderas is like, <laughs> it was you. Yeah, so he's like, uh, did Crayon put him up to this kind of thing? Or maybe he killed uh, the old king. Who knows? Who knows? Well, let's. Who knows? L we know, and we we'll, we will find out. Well, you know, I don't know. I know, and I'm about to tell you. So. Shh. 
The leader of the chorus asks Oedipus to chill. <laughs> Oedipus, chill. <laughs> Please. Um, but Tiresias, the, the prophet, only taunts Oedipus further, saying that the king does not even know who his parents are. Oh, <laughs> You're just an orphan. Little bastard boy. <laughs> the statement both infuriates and intrigues Oedipus, um, who asks Tiresias, all-knowing, to tell him the truth of his parentage. Can Why is Tiresias all-knowing? He's a prophet. He can just see the future. Oh, he's high as well. Okay. <laughs> he saw snakes. Any prophet I know is just half and glue. <laughs> All right. Or paint in the soft place. <laughs> yeah, like Charlie <laughs> from It's Always Sunny Philadelphia. He's a prophet. Yeah. He's just like, is that a snake and a bird's claw? War. <laughs> <laughs> Tiresias answers only in riddles, saying that the murderer of Laius, is he the, the previous Sphinx? king. <laughs> they're like, Oedipus, you're supposed to be good at this. He's like, shit. It was a fluke. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> Let's hoping it'll work again. <laughs> so Tiresias says that the murder of Laius will turn out to be both brother and father to Oedipus's children, both son and husband to his mother. Everyone storms off at this point. Um, That's not chorus... a riddle. He's going to fuck his mom. Um, and the chorus takes the stage, confused and unsure whom to believe. The chorus resolves that um, it will, they will, not believe any of these accusations against Oedipus until they are shown proof. Which is good of them. When do we meet the mom? Crayon enters, soon followed by Oedipus, who is losing his shit. Um, Oedipus accuses Crayon of trying to overthrow him, since it was he who recommended that Tiresias come, right? Um, yes. Crayon's like, whoa. I thought dude. he was cool, dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> whoa. And he asks Oedipus to be rational, which is exactly what you should say in any argument with anyone. Be it's rational. Not. <laughs> um, but Oedipus says that he wants Crayon killed. Oh, great. So, like, melted in the sun, am I right? <laughs> Crayons. They're made out of wax. <sighs> Both Crayon and the leader of the chorus try to get Oedipus to understand that he's concocting fantasies, but Oedipus can't be talked down till Jocasta arrives. Mom? Who, who's Jocasta? No, mom. Oedipus's wife. And mom. Is it actually his mom? Stop winking at me! <laughs> this is an auditory <laughs> medium. Jocasta convinces Oedipus that he should neither kill nor exile Crayon. And he says, okay, but he's still pretty sure Crayon is trying to overthrow him. He's like, okay, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Crayon leaves and the chorus reassures Oedipus that it, the chorus, will always be loyal to him. <laughs> so he's really like, thanks, you're not real. So. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, I don't know you. <laughs> Oedipus explains to Jocasta how Tiresias condemned him. Um, he was like, he said I was going to fuck my mom. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, what, but like baby? weird. No, that's not possible. Uh, Jocasta oh. responds that all prophets are false. As proof, she offers the fact that the Delphic Oracle once told Laius, the previous king, her previous husband, uh, um, that, oh. he would be, that he would be murdered by his son. Uh, well, actually, his son was cast out of Thebes as a baby. And Laius Why? was murdered it was by a, a baby. band of Thebes. He was cast out of Thebes as a baby because there was a prophecy that he'd kill his dad. And he did. Maybe. Hey, come on. Um, and she's like, and, and anyway, it was wrong because Lice was murdered by a band of thieves. So there. And he's like, wait, though, that story sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, hang on one second. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who'd you just repeat that? Uh, um, you guys want to go to Chili's after this? <laughs> <laughs> he asks her to hear more. Jocasta tells him that Lice was killed at a three-way crossroads uh -oh. just before Oedipus arrived in Thebes. Oedipus oh. is like, Pulling at his collar, sweating a little. Like, I Hells. guess he didn't know that that was the king. He was just like, I just wanted to kill him. Yeah. And then I saw he, a sphinx, real cool. He tells his wife that he may be the one who murdered Laius. <laughs> he tells Jocasta that long ago, when he was a prince of Corinth, he heard at a banquet that he was not really the son of the king and queen. So he went to the Oracle of Delphi, who did not answer him about that particular question, but did tell him that he would murder, murder his father, and sleep with his mother. And he was like, yuck. And He's like, I'm so home. sick of people telling me this. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so he fled his home never to return he's like well i can't kill my dad and fuck my mom if i'm not in the same city as them right wrong (laughs) it was then on the journey well right but but wrong conclusion um it was then on that journey that would take him to thebes that oedipus was confronted and harassed by a group of travelers whom he killed in self-defense apparently at the very crossroads where Linus was supposed to have been killed. He's like, uh, kind of like six foot three guy, soft dick. Mm. <laughs> um, thoroughly... Kind of looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> thoroughly stressing at this point, as he might have to exile his damn self. <laughs> Oedipus. <laughs> I'll exile my own self. <laughs> Oedipus sends for the shepherd, who is the only man to survive the attack. Oedipus and Jocasta leave the stage and the chorus re-enters, announcing that the world is ruled by destiny. Mm. And the chorus denounces prideful men who would defy the gods. But they said they'd the same... always be on his side. At the same time, the chorus speculates that if all the prophecies and oracles are wrong, if a proud man can, in fact, triumph, then the gods may not rule the world after all. So there's that. Great. Inconclusive, yet again. <laughs> Jocasta enters from the palace to offer a branch wrapped in wool to Apollo. He's still cold, I guess. He's like, He's like you know like, what? Yeah, I hey, hand me this. that wool. I'm fucking freezing out here. That's you. Yeah. From now on, all your blankets shall have sticks in them. <laughs> oh, no. What? <laughs> oh, no. It's a, it's a handle. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a marketable. That's our product. A f- big flag. Blankets with handles. <laughs> Blandles. What are you going to hold on to? <laughs> the blanket. <laughs> what if it's too soft? You need the handle. <laughs> Get a real firm grip on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically just like a blanket getting weaved, but then taken <laughs> straight out of the machine. <laughs> And they're like, let's steal the handles, steal this, though. anyone. No one's allowed to steal this. This is our business. TM. Blandles. Blandles. When you want a blanket, but there's no handles, who are you going to call? Blandles. <laughs> Amazing. A messenger enters looking for Oedipus. He tells Jocasta that he has come from Corinth to tell Oedipus that his father, Polybus. Polybus. <laughs> Sorry, that's a funny name. Um, he's the king of Corinth, um, is dead. And that Corinth... Polly bless Molka? <laughs> like, Paul black Molka. So the king of Corinth, who <laughs> Oedipus believes to be his father, is dead. Corinth wants Oedipus to come home and rule there. Which would be convenient, right? If he ends up being exiled. But no one seems to take that angle. Guess I'm the only sane person in this. Who are you, that one villager that's like, is anyone else... <laughs> Anyone else hey. weirded out he's always naked and hard? <laughs> hey, why did we never investigate that murder? Yeah. Um, he just made this guy king because he uh, solved a riddle unintentionally. But sure. Jocasta is like, hell yes, convinced that since Polybus is dead from natural causes, the prophecy that Oedipus will murder, murder his father must be wrong, right? Wrong. Well. Oh, Oedipus arrives, hears the messenger's news, and rejoices with Jocasta. King and queen confer, concur that prophecies are worthless and that the world is ruled by chance. Thank God, right? Thank God. Uh, wrap this up. Uh, However. This uh-oh. being COVID. <laughs> um, Oedipus still fears that the part of the prophecy that said he would stop his mother um, may be true. So the messenger says that Oedipus can rid himself of that worry because Polybus and his wife Merope are not really Oedipus' natural parents. <laughs> so that's nice, right? Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> the messenger <I> explains <laughs> <laughs> that he used to be a shepherd years ago. Oh, no. One day he found a baby on Mount... I forgot how to pronounce oh. this. Near baby. Thebes. <laughs> Mount Citheron? Mount Baby. Or, K- or Kitheron. Mount Baby. Near Thebes. Mount Baby. The baby had its ankles pinned together. Ow. That was in brackets. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> That's, that was the tone of voice it had. Ow. <laughs> and the former 
shepherd set them free. So he released that poor baby's ankles. That baby <laughs> was Oedipus, who actually still walks with a limp because of the injury to his ankles so long ago. When Oedipus inquires who left him in the woods on the mountain, the messenger replies that another shepherd, Laius' servant, gave him baby Oedipus. Jocasta is just sweating in the background at this moment. <laughs> like, that anyone, here? anyone else, like, really hot? Getting, like, her slaves to fan her more. <laughs> like, <laughs> bring him in. Oedipus wants to find this other shepherd of Laius's oh, no. so he can find out who his natural parents are. Jocasta oh, is like, man. why would you do that? Don't. But Oedipus is insistent. After I'm screaming good, a little bit and pleading some more to no avail. Um, After screaming a little bit. <laughs> That's how he gets his way. He just screams a little oh. bit. <laughs> no, this is Jocasta who does this. She, Jocasta, finally flees back into the palace. Yeah. Oedipus is like, wow, my wife is such a snob. She thinks <laughs> I might so be born weird. of poor parents. Rude. <laughs> Why is um, she being so weird? Did she throw up? <laughs> <laughs> um, and Oedipus in the course rejoice at the possibility that he may soon know who his true parents really. no don't rejoice man no, the do other it. shepherd who turns out to be the same shepherd who witnesses who witnessed Laius's murder oh how convenient there's only two shepherds in Thebes um, oh. <laughs> the messenger identifies him as the messenger <laughs> like you know, it's, like a... <laughs> it's like a BBC show where there's like 12 people who live in oh like, it's broad London. church yeah yeah um <laughs> Does, you remember that old Merlin show? Does anyone remember that old Merlin no show? No one watched like, Merlin except for you. All right? I didn't watch it. I watched like one episode, but I remember being struck that Camelot only had like 10 citizens. Yeah. That was weird. <laughs> there was a sphinx problem in the other town. I... Like you got what? You got a butcher, <laughs> baker, candlestick maker. Who's going to buy their wares tailor, though? Fish guy shepherd cow guy like you're not you don't have enough people to make a town <laughs> well you do if they're gonna buy each other's wares it's like a self-sustaining um there's more knights a... than there are tradespeople. it's just not it's not a good model anyway. i never said it was a good model like, I, I, where's I, camlet I... now <laughs> good point not around fucking dead so this other shepherd comes to the stage um, the messenger identifies him as the man who gave him the young Oedipus. Oedipus interrogates him, asking who gave him the baby, but the shepherd refuses to talk. He's, like, making this neck-cutting motion. <laughs> He's like, don't. I just found a baby. I don't know. Ask the other shepherd. What baby? I thought it was a rock. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, baby? <laughs> lady. <laughs> oh, lady, yeah. Gravy. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, finally, after Oedipus threatens him with, like, a little bit of torture, um, like a little bit. <laughs> like um, waterboarding. <laughs> you know, I asked Isabel once if, like, she would waterboard me just because I want to see what it felt like, and she's like, I'm like, just a little bit. And she's like, I don't think I can do it a little bit. It has to be a lot so you'd know what it feels like. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'll know what it feels like after, like, one cup of water. She's like, no, I think, like, at least a bucket. I'm like, wait, so are you saying Yes. <laughs> And that's the story of why she hasn't been around. She's in jail. (laughs) (laughs) A little bit of torture. Shepard answers that the baby actually came from the house of Laius. It's Laius's natural born child. And that Who could have seen this coming? Yeah, well, everyone. Because it's a super famous story. Jocasta apparently gave the baby to him to destroy. (laughs) <laughs> that's ground, what they I say guess. in the council you know when um if your pet is found wandering or something it will be Destroy destroyed <laughs> like not just killed it implies like it like exploding like the council puts like <laughs> dynamite like puts like dynamite like on the lot. dog <laughs> and then sets it free <laughs> it, like, <explodes>. destroyed <laughs> <laughs> like a red stamp on the file. <laughs> yeah, yeah she, she gave the baby to him to destroy because of a prophecy that the child would kill his father and what? And fuck her. Fuck his mom. That's right. She's like, um, he's not that hot. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, the shepherd gave him to the other shepherd so that oh, he might be raised as a prince in Corinth. He nice, him. right? Nice of him, right? No. Wrong. Oh. <laughs> A lot of that. <laughs> Wrong. 
Realizing who he is and who his parents are, Oedipus screams that he sees the truth and flees uh, back into the palace, truly flaccid at this point. True. Well, you would hope so. <laughs> what if he's like rock hard? That's why he's screaming. Are we going to have to give this an explicit rating? All, all, the, um, all the blood drains from his face and just keeps going to his penis. <laughs> so he's like deathly pale. And just engorged. I know, his dick is just, like, turgid. (laughs) Just, like, slightly throbbing. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) We might have to flag this one. (laughs) Well, it is about, like, fucking your mom, so, yeah. Yeah, it was already an SFW. An Uh, SFH. It's SFW if you have AirPods. (laughs) sponsor us please that would be they have so much money the shepherd and the mess so he flees back into the palace i think i said that already the shepherd and the messenger slowly exit the stage i like to think that they're (laughs) like backwards (laughs) yeah they're just like you get it i don't want to be in that palace right now (laughs) just like all the way off the stage (laughs) and into the wings the chorus is like the chorus actually enters and cries That even Oedipus, greatest of men, was brought low by destiny, for he, and I don't know if you knew this, unknowingly murdered his father and married his mother. The messenger enters again to tell the chorus what has happened in the palace. Jocasta is dead. She hanged herself, or she locked herself in the bedroom, crying for Laius, weeping for her monstrous fate. He comes to the door in a fury, asking for a sword, cursing Jocasta, because everything's a woman's fault, right? I guess like she didn't know she was fucking her son. She was like, kind of feels familiar, but I'm not going to think about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. There's actually a line in the show where he's like, he entered her back through the door that he entered the world or something. <laughs> we go there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. That's the line. It's a bit like that. Um... <laughs> It be Thank like you. that sometimes. <laughs> Oedipus, <Hopefully> 429. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, he finally hurled himself at the bedroom door, burst through it where he saw Jocasta hanging from a noose from, yes. I'm guessing, her four-poster bed. Yeah. Or like <laughs> just from the beams, from the ceiling beams or something. Mm. I don't know how she got up there, though. Anyway, yeah, I would kill myself too if I knew I fucked my son. Yeah, that's why I'm never having kids because you never know. And you can't if you, you can't. if you ever. That's what, that's what they thought. He was like, if I leave my town, I won't fuck my parents. She was like, if I leave my child to die, he won't fuck his fuck parents. Fuck me. Wrong. Wrong. Square. Wrong. 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 Yeah. Wrong. Wrong. Life finds a way. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Goldblum. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love the th- idea that the gods are sitting up in their cloud. You know, their god goggle box. They're going, yeah. And they're like, "Hey, you want me to? You want to watch me make him do something really fucked up?" <laughs> they're just like, "Just wait. This was a bit of a slow burn, but like, literally, eighteen years later, it's gonna pay off. <laughs> <laughs> like, eighteen seasons later, you're gonna see what oh this god. is about. <laughs> it's worth it. Stick with it." Seasons two to like sixteen, the worst. We're so boring. I know, kind of weird. Then the it. Sphinx happens, and it's 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 getting there. It's riling up. <laughs> so seeing this, Oedipus sobs, embraces her. I don't know at that point if I'd do that. Yeah, because like if you hang yourself, you're covered in shit, dude. Well, yeah. Then he takes the gold pins that <laughs> held her robes. So women Ew. would like fasten their robes with two gold. Let's go look brushes. at his dead naked mom wife. Nah. Takes the pins, um, crying that he could not bear to see the world now that he has learned the truth. And he... Mm. Uh, mm, squishy, squish. Oh, Alana um, seems to not have known that with her mouth. Oh, you didn't know agog. that? Yeah, he digs his eyes out. Oh, come on. Just as the messenger finishes the story, Oedipus emerges from the palace. With blood streaming from his blind eyes, he fumes and rants at his fate. I actually did this monologue for, like, year 11 theater studies. <laughs> uh, did you choose to do this one? Yeah. Or was it given to you? Or you were like, um, it was one of go- the pl- It was one of the plays we could choose from. Okay. And I was right. like, yeah, I like it. I'm fucked up. 
Yeah, I'm fucking edgy. I love Fight Club. <laughs> as if that wasn't you as well. Yeah, no, that was... I was doing me. Yeah, oh. <laughs> um, do you um, think when he ran out with the, you know, the gold clips in his eyes... Erect or flaccid? <laughs> I don't think flaccid. I think all his blood's yeah. kind of. I reckon a bit of yeah, all the blood. He's coming <laughs> bit out of a life. chub. He's sporting a chub still. <laughs> <laughs> Real men don't die, baby. <laughs> what a weird tone. <laughs> this this episode is taken. <laughs> so he's like, uh, "Curse you, the infinite darkness that now embraces me." Ugh. Well, you blinded yourself, bro. <laughs> he claims that though Apollo ordained his destiny, it was he alone who pierced his own eyes. So I was like, "Yeah, freedom." I guess it's he like, asks that he be banished from Thebes. The chorus presumably is like, "No one's stopping you." Leave it, bro. He's just like, "Yeah, but you have to physically banish me because I can't see." <laughs> Can you at least like point me towards the exit because I, I cannot see? <laughs> Spin me around three times. Yo, <laughs> 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 his mom's a piñata. And his dick's a stick. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wait, too gross. Rated TG. Too gross. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. I don't want to be in this episode anymore. <laughs> I want to take myself out of this episode's <laughs> narrative. <laughs> Excluded from this episode, please. Um, he curses his birth, his marriage, his life, and in turn, all births, marriages, and lives. Okay. Crayon enters, and the chorus is like, thank God. <laughs> Crayon will sort out this nonsense. Crayon forgives Oedipus for his past accusations of treason. Nice of him. Well, he's going asks, through something. At this point, he's wearing the crown as well in the version that I watched, by the way. <laughs> he's just like, I don't know if you uh, if you noticed because you're a uh, blind, but I... <laughs> check this out. Um, he asks that Oedipus be sent inside so that the public display of shame might end. <laughs> We're Get all your dick out of there. <laughs> Creon agrees to exile Oedipus from the city, but tells him that he will only do so if every detail is approved by the gods. <laughs> they just go through it. They're like, yep, gross. <laughs> yep. Ew. <laughs> Oedipus, like, clicking the pen. Oedipus, Oedipus embraces the hope of the exile, since he believes that for some reason the gods want to keep him alive. He says that his two sons are men and can take care of themselves, but asks that Creon take care of his girls, whom he would like to see one final time. The girls, Ew, Antigone, his, like, sister babies, daughters. Yeah. yeah. Um, Antigone actually gets her own play, or got her own play as like a. This is like a prequel to Antigone, I guess. So officially, it, it, the events of this happen before Antigone, but they think it was written first. Um, so she's one of his daughters, and the other one is 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 Mene. Okay. They come forth. They're crying. Their mom's dead. They don't know what's going on. Oedipus embraces them and says he weeps for them since they will be excluded from society. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. Uh, thanks for. Um, no man will want Dad, to marry. Bro. No one will want to marry the offspring of an incestuous marriage. Probably true. Um, Oedipus. <laughs> You really didn't have to do all this on the balcony in front of the whole city, Dad. <laughs> Dad, why are you hard again? <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Oedipus turns to Creon and asks him to promise that he will take care of them, the girls. He reaches Destroy. out to Creon. But Creon will not touch his hand. <laughs> Ew. Oedipus asks his daughters to pray that they may have a better life than his. Creon then puts an end to their farewell, saying Oedipus has wept shamefully long enough. <laughs> Creon you know. orders the guards to take Antigone and Ismene away from Oedipus and tells Oedipus that his power has ended. Everyone exits. The chorus comes on stage once more. Oedipus, the greatest of men, has fallen, they say. And so all life is miserable and only death can bring peace. And presumably at this point they're like turn him towards the gates of the city. <laughs> He's just like, I'm out, right? 
<laughs> at one point i just wanted someone to come in and say what is that just so someone could say you know what it is bitch <laughs> get a gun out <laughs> that's uh, uh it's always sunny in philadelphia reference for you good people Ooh, yeah. i never saved that that what? could have gone bad what you did what you saved no the document oh <laughs> my notes oh it was just it's already on the edge could have just gone off wikipedia that's true it's gone from memory it's memory (laughs) okay so it's the end just him like like feeling his way out of the city yeah basically (laughs) just like ow (laughs) there's also a sequel to this um which is called oedipus at electric boogaloo so yeah exactly (laughs) um something like that what happens? Is it just his misadventures as a blind incest I don't know. I guy? haven't read it yet, but maybe we can do it later sometime. Um, this is obviously um, the most famous one. But is Antigone have... is, a, is also is probably the second most famous. Why? Um, what's what's up with her? Plays just because it's she's like this huge proto-feminist figure who oh. kind of destroys shit and is cool. Because she's like, yeah, my dad may have been super gross, but I'm not... Is that what happens? Um, yeah, I guess so. Again, I haven't read that one yet, so I don't know. How'd you find it? Um, well, we knew he was going to fuck his mom, but the way he found out was pretty fun. Mm. And uh, and the eye gouging? Did you know about the eye gouging before? Yeah, I knew about the eye gouging. Yeah, Alana did, and Alana was strong. Al- Al- Alana's metaphorical eyes were gouged. <laughs> Man, that's... So you can kind of see why Freud was into it a bit. Yeah, mom fucking. Yeah. That's what gave him his whole mom fucking idea. Yeah, he was like... His whole motherfucking idea. (laughs) Motherfucking idea. He's like, maybe we're all Oedipus. This was fun, though. This was good. This was fun. Mm. Oh, poor Oedipus. Poor Poor us. Poor buddy. Maybe there's some motherfucker in Melbourne that we just need to exile. Solve all the problems. Yeah, okay. So, if anyone knows anyone that fucked their mom and possibly killed their dad in a botched, like, thievery job, please let us know. Because we think that will end this plague. (laughs) Or if anyone sees a sphinx (laughs) fucking around, just answer the damn riddle. The answer is man. It's man. (laughs) It's a man. And eventually... We'll be able to go out with our friends and have Korean barbecue again. Oh. Also, people won't die, etc. That as well. That that old. That as well. <laughs> I know what a bamboo know. shoot looks like. Shut the fuck up. How do you know what a bamboo shoot looks like? I've been out in the fields. <laughs> As a bamboo? <laughs> As a bamboo panda? Field. I did it because I knew this moment was coming. When, when Alana would be eating me. random salad and you'd have to prove your bamboo right. shoot knowledge. That's right. 